What's up guys, we're back with another Power Rangers Lightning Collection review, taking a look at a new two-pack that is very much outside of the norm when it comes to this line. We are taking a look at the Power Rangers and TMNT crossover line. So we're taking a look at the uh, Foot Soldier Tommy and Red Ranger morphed Raphael uh, figure today. I have been dying to get my hands on these ever since they were sort of leaked. The listings were leaked months and months ago. Uh, so it's cool to finally get these because, well, obviously I like Rangers, I like Turtles, so it's gotta work on some level, right? So uh, we've got them here in a pretty normal style two-pack box, but it is a little bit different at the same time. So you've got the figure there in the window. So you've got Tommy, you've got Raph, you've got a uh, Tom Whalen shot on each corner for each figure, but then there's a green motif on the box that gives it that Turtles ooze vibe, and then those uh, silhouettes of the figures wrap around each side, and then the back of the box, uh, in typical fashion, gives us that CG render style shot. So this is very much a Lightning Collection box, but it does have a little bit of that Turtles flair with the, with the green colorway and kind of that Turtles call out. So I do like that, uh, but let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go out of the package, our morphed Raphael Red Ranger and our foot soldier Tommy. These are, these are interesting figures. I'm not sure they're really too far removed from what I should have expected them to be, uh, but they're, they're good. They're not great. They're good. Uh, I have very much been, like I've said, interested in this line, in what these figures will bring. Like, I'd have been happy if they had just done two two-packs for the Turtles and a Deluxe Shredder, but of course we know, we know they're not just going to do that. So we were getting what we get. Like, I don't necessarily think I ever wanted or needed a Foot Soldier Tommy, but he does look pretty decent for a kind of army builder grunt kind of guy if someone wants to go that route on i'm sure there are so uh let's see what these guys can do see how they move around i want to tackle the turtle first because let's face it that's why we're all here we'll talk about uh mr oliver here shortly so we've got our we've got our red ranger and this is this is definitely an interesting figure because it's it's not it's not tons and tons of reuse like we are used to when it comes to this line but there's also a distinct sort of I don't know, weird feeling about these figures. Like they, they don't look or feel like they're the same line in some ways. They're, they're very interesting. The finish seems a little bit duller in some ways, and they just don't exactly feel to me like the same figures that we get in Lightning Collection. It's not necessarily a negative. Don't take that to mean like they're the worst things ever, but they're definitely a little bit different while at the same time uh, still being very similar if that's not too confusing. So, uh, Raph has got a head that can look up really good. He's got an independently articulated neck, like the neck moves, but it is so thick that it doesn't really afford too much movement. He can't really look down just a little bit. Like you can see the sight line is obviously going that way. We've got good tilt though. That's good. And then full rotation, of course, uh, arms out way out at the shoulders. They, of course, rotate. You've got a butterfly joint in there, but it, it really isn't doing much. You've got your bicep swivel. We've got double jointed uh, elbows. And what's really interesting, unless I just haven't noticed it yet, because I'm super far behind on Lightning Collection, this guy's fully pinless. Uh, so he has no pins, which you know makes sense. It's a lot of new construction here, so it makes sense in that regard. Uh, so you've got pinless, double jointed elbows. We've got vertically hinged rotating elbow, or not, that's not an elbow, that's a wrist. And then the torso, well, He's a turtle, and if you are like me, you you possibly collect 45 different lines of turtles at any given time these days, and most of the time, they do not have any torso articulation. You're not going to find a crunch. Uh, you're not going to find really much tilt or anything like that either. He does have a waist twist down here uh, because the shell is actually cut. So pull that belt up a little bit. You can see there is a, a torso cut here. So the the, the, it's not a situation like NECA's or Super 7's where the shell is one piece and then there's a big tube that goes up inside there basically. Uh, this is literally like a waist. So it does twist. You're going to get a lot of resistance if you go too far. But it does afford decent movement. I mean, like, you're going to get some resistance, but it moves really, really well. There is some tilt. It's not a lot. And there's really nothing forward or backward. But there is a little shimmy side to side. Uh, legs go out pretty far. They kick forward all the way, basically. You get some, get some, but very little kickback. There is a thigh cut. He sort of has pseudo drop-down hips, like they, they, they afford it, but at the same time, they don't really. It's not exactly, it's just, I think it's just some play in the peg there. We've got double-jointed pinless knees. They go back pretty good, despite the shell being in the way. And then you've got your boot cut. 
at the boot. You've got rocker, which is really good, and then you've got really good hinge down here as well. So he's pretty decently articulated. I mean, the torso is, is and always will be the stopgap for a turtle figure. I think that they've done a pretty decent job of kind of hiding this one here. You know, NECA's Super 7s, none of them have tremendously good uh, torso or waist articulation, even with what they've been doing lately. This is just a different take on it. So you can twist him all the way around, but I mean, that doesn't look good at the same time, but it's hidden. So that's, that's sort of a positive. Otherwise, he's very similar to what you would expect to get out of a Lightning Collection figure, other than the fact that there is a, I, I wish there was a little bit more play at the neck. Like it feels like it wants to move, but it's just not going to. And then he can't really uh, look down too much. Now, aesthetically, for the most part, I do think that these work pretty well. Raph, in particular, does look all right. There is one thing that is absolutely driving me nuts, though, uh, and it's something that I thought we were going to get away from uh, when it came to these guys. I didn't notice it at first. Uh, there's always been a thing with a lot of releases in this line where various body parts will not match other body parts when it comes to molded plastic for one reason or another. Uh, I don't know the intricacies of how this does or doesn't work, but a lot of times, like the legs and the arms don't always match the torsos. Usually it's okay. Uh, that's obviously not an issue here because we've got a gold torso for that uh, undershell. But, and I'm sure it's not gonna, I'm sure it's not gonna, not gonna show here. The kneecaps and the elbows do not match the rest of the figure. So of course we've got uh, pinless joints here. So it's a, you know, a different setup in terms of uh, of what we would normally see, so you've got the cap on the back of the of the elbow and the cap on the knee, and then you've got the injection uh, molded uh, interior parts of the joint there. The colors are lighter; they are slightly lighter red, and and I just I can't not see it anymore. So it is a it is an annoyance. Is it the end of the world? No, but it's one of those things I really thought we were like this close from not having it on this guy. Uh, and it reared its head in a new and weirder way. So moving on beyond that, I think for the most part, he looks pretty good otherwise. Uh, this is very much, you know, kind of what you expect. It's a turtle that has morphed into a Power Ranger, but he still retains all of the the telltale turtle signs. So you've got, you know, this really crazy looking like sunburst style shell back here with a really very like techno armored looking uh, undershell here with the white diamond, very much an MMPR hallmark. Uh, you've got a white belt with the uh, holsters. These are for his side. We do have the diamonds on the gauntlets and the boots. My gauntlets for the, uh, my gloves rather, not gauntlets, they're gloves. For the, for the arms, they are a little haphazard. I've got some paint flex here and there. Uh, we'll see if I can maybe touch those up. There's some weirdness going on with those. We've got the golden armbands, which are not in this case indicative of like, you know, having the, the dragon shield or anything like that. I believe they all have those, right? But you've got the gold bands here, which look okay. I've got a little paint flub on the inside here, missing some gold paint there, which, you know, kind of to be expected when it comes to Lightning Collection, I suppose. The Morpher on the belt, though, looks okay. It's it's not perfect, but it's okay. The Dragon Coin, or not the Dragon Coin, that's a T-Rex. He's Red Ranger. T-Rex Coin looks pretty good. There is some sculpt there. A little bit of texture, of course, gold and red paint. And then the boots are, for the most part, pretty clean. Uh, this, this red paint is very, like, thickly applied on. Like, it's not at all see-through or streaky. Same for the same for the gloves, really. The only real issue I have is I've got some issues on the white, not the red. What I do really like with this design, and it, it's a small thing, but it, it's like one of those, you know, it's a attention to detail kind of thing. Uh, we've still got, you know, the lines on the gloves, which they're supposed to have. But, of course, you know, you've got three fingers on the hand for a turtle. And then we've got two toes down here for the boots. So instead of it being a normal boot that we're used to seeing, you can sort of see that indentation for the toes there, which I do really like. It's it's a stupid thing, but it's one of those like small attention to detail kind of things that, that really kind of tie it all together. Uh, the big thing for me with this guy is really just the colors. And there's like, you know, that one thing with the joints that does kind of bother me. But for the most part, the reds are consistent otherwise, you know, notwithstanding the, the joint issue on the elbows and the knees. They are very clean and crisp for the most part because overwhelmingly it's just molded plastic. But the upper body does match the lower body and the gloves and the boots do match really well. I also do like the golds. Uh, this molded plastic here matches the paint on the arms pretty well. And then the helmet is, is pretty cool. Like, I mean... 
the big thing for this line is is ultimately the cool factor for a turtle that's morphed into a Power Ranger and retains all those turtle characteristics. So we've got a slightly larger helmet than normal. It's it's kind of it's shorter, but maybe a little bit girthier. And you've got this uh, very very menacing looking uh, T Rex turtle design in here, basically. So you've got the all of the teeth painted in there. You've got the black void for the visor, but then he's also got those red eyes, which I think look really cool. Uh, the helmet is very glossy, looks really good paint is really clean and crisp I have zero uh, criticisms or, or complaints when it comes to this I think it looks all right especially in comparison to a lot of others that we've seen lately uh, this is very very nicely done I mean if there's one area where they need to be really concise and very uh, close to the source material it's the helmet and I think this does work uh, really nicely so he doesn't he doesn't come away unscathed but for the most part I do think this guy does look the part pretty well and then we've got our Tommy Oliver figure. And, and again, this is one that, you know, I didn't need. Like, this, this is not something I've been clamoring for by any means. Uh, I just want the Turtles, really. That's really all I would love to have had. Turtles and Shredder. But, you know, I've got to check him out. And this is this is very much what you think it's going to be. It's going to be, you know, like a putty base, uh, figure, basically. So there's really nothing surprising when it comes to how this guy is constructed or what he can do. Uh, his head is capable of looking up really, really nicely. He can look down really good. Not really any tilt, a little bit, but not much. And you've got full rotation, of course. Arms out at the shoulders. They, of course, can rotate, but you do have this sort of uh, bib thing on them, so just sort of watch it. You're going to have to shimmy that around to get, to get it around the thing if you need, for some reason, to do a full 360. You've got your uh, butterfly joint in there, which has really good movement, specifically backwards. We've got a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, of course, so a really good range there. He is not pinless because there's a lot of reuse on this guy. Uh, we've got our vertical hinges and rotation at the wrist, and that is both wrists. You've got your diaphragm cut, so he goes you know, all the way around. Bob him forward, backward, side to side, all that good stuff, in conjunction with the ab crunch, so he goes backwards about this far. Forward's really good, too. And then your tilt is, is pretty decent. Legs are pretty standard for the line, so they kick out about yay far. Forward, all the way. Backwards, only slightly, but enough. You've got your twist at the thigh. We've got double jointed knees, so all the way back. And then you've got a nicely hidden boot cut, shin swivel, rocker at those ankles. And then, of course, you've got a good hinge down there as well. Uh, nothing really getting in the way. So he's basically a putty. Uh, he's like, you know, a putty or a cog, essentially, because he's a foot soldier. So he's built on that same framework. Uh, but he does work pretty nicely. Like, there's really no issues with articulation. He's very much uh, par for the course when it comes to what Lightning Collection normally does. Aesthetically, this guy is kind of boring but at the same time like it looks pretty good too so it's one of those things that if you are interested in this version of a foot soldier uh, for your turtles display or if you need to army build this guy you're, you're getting a pretty decent foot soldier it's just for my money I just didn't really want him to be included I guess uh, I just didn't need him but he looks pretty decent like there's not a whole lot wrong with him uh, it's just it's just Tommy as a foot soldier, so it doesn't really grip me all that much. But that's more of a personal thing rather than a slight against the figure. Uh, so he's got, you know, again, kind of the bib thing going on here. You've got your uh, gray bodysuit, which is unpainted, but that's okay. You know, very similar to what we would see with a, with a putty or anything like that. I do like the metallic uh, gauntlets, you know, very Foot Clan, very Shredder-esque. So these are really bright. There's, that's very metallic. I do like that. It's very shimmery. Works really well. Uh, you've got your sash down here with purple and gray, and then you've got your boots. Uh, which have the wraps on them. So the majority of this figure is unpainted. Uh, there's a little bit of paint on the sash, there is some paint on the gauntlets, and there's a little bit on the face. That is it otherwise. Uh, everything else down here is uh, molded separate parts uh, for the most part, except for a little gray down here on the on the boots. So the boot is uh, is purple with a little bit of gray paint, which isn't isn't a big deal. I mean, it's either it's either painted or it's unpainted, and if it needs to be painted, that's fine, but it doesn't necessarily need to be painted here. 
and I think he looks okay. I just don't think he's all that exciting of a figure. I do think, though, that this is a pretty good marriage of turtles and and foot, you know, like foot soldier within the Power Rangers world, though. Uh, so it does look pretty decent. It's it's very noticeable. It's very it's very easily identifiable based on the colors, but it's also very much uh, a little bit of a changed up thing to fit a different kind of world. So like, I know this is a foot soldier right off the bat. But I can tell he's not the normal foot soldier uh, that I'm used to seeing. And then, of course, you know, you've got your head sculpted up here, which is kind of like a blank mask. So it's like a it's like a wrap around the head. But there's also a mask that sits over the face also. So it's like a hood with a mask, if that makes more sense. Hood and face mask. You've got a little smokiness on the eyes, uh, a little bit of black paint and then some red just to fill those in. So he can be uh, exactly what you think he is. Tommy as a foot soldier, if you want to pair him with the turtles and April whenever we get the whole team, or he can be your army builder grunt type of figure if you're crazy enough to go out there and buy a bunch of this pack to have six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these guys. And then as far as size comparisons go, we do have to talk about this briefly. We've got our Raph here on the left, our foot soldier Tommy here on the right, and we've got our Super 7 Raph uh, here in the middle. And you can see they all kind of line up pretty well. Of course, Raph in this line does skew slightly smaller than most of the Ultimates. So, you know, he kind of lines up alongside these, but he's definitely a little bit bulkier. Uh, so these guys are still your normal 112 style six inch figure. And then we've got our NECA, disguise Raph here and you can see that he he's a tune figure obviously uh, he skews a little bit smaller because of course he's not necessarily in the same kind of scale uh, with these guys now we'll take a look at a few other things that don't necessarily involve turtles and see how things stack up so here is a seven inch figure here is a Motu classics he-man because why not he's close he's handy and then here we go with another Hasbro figure. So here is a G.I. Joe uh, Classified Series Cobra Bat. And then one more Hasbro figure. Here is a Marvel Legends built on one of the more normal bucks. So here is a, a Nova figure. So you can see they're going to... Just they're going to line up just fine with anything 112, anything normal 112, uh, they're going to be fine. Uh, other turtle stuff, you might be able to fudge them in a little bit, uh, but anything much higher than 112, you know, anything like 7 inch scale, normal 7 inch scale Motu Classics, most NECA stuff, uh, most Super 7 stuff probably isn't going to work too well otherwise. Now, when it comes to accessories, this set is uh, is pretty well stacked, and, and honestly, that's pretty normal for Lightning Collection. There's there's generally a good selection of stuff here, and and for the most part, I think it's all right. I'm going to start with the heads because they're important. Uh, so we've got Tommy's here, and I think this is uh, honestly probably one of the better Tommy head sculpts. This is still a situation where. I'm never going to use this, I don't think. Like, this might be the one where I change it up and actually use it because then it truly makes him Tommy instead of just, like, a nameless grunt. But still, I like foot soldiers. But this is a pretty good head sculpt. He's even got his earring. Uh, it's got photo printing, so it's, it's, it's pretty clean and crisp for the most part. Uh, you've got the bandana in the back with the flowing locks and everything. And I think it's a, it's a pretty pretty decent young Jason David Frank style uh, sculpt. It's, it's not bad. I'm pretty happy with that one. Uh, the only real downside is that he's got a purple bandana, so it's it's hard. To, it's going to be hard maybe to throw that in on others, other figures if you want, but you'd probably make it work, I suppose. No real, no real harm, I'm sure. And then we've got rafts, which this is where I start to kind of lose it because I don't really like these head sculpts. There's like any of them uh, so far. I'm not really happy with what they look like in the promo shots. For one, I think they're too small. Uh, this does not look appropriately sized to what is a very thick and sturdy body. Uh, I just don't think it's all that great. This is also another instance where I'm probably never going to use this head. Uh, I'm probably always going to keep them helmeted because that's what makes these so cool. So it may not be you know, much of a problem, but at the same time, I don't really care for this head sculpt. It's just, it's just not doing it for me. Uh, the expression is, is very rough, but he just, he just looks really small. Like he looks almost pinheaded in many ways. So I'm, I'm not all that jazzed about that, but if I never use it, is it really that big of a deal? I suppose time will tell on that. Uh, beyond that, we do have some other stuff. So uh, Tommy gets a set of fists. So you get some extra hands. Of course, he's got gripping hands on him in the box. You get some fists, and then he gets a uh, a set of uh, little add-ons for what would be you know if you take the uh, take the the hood off, so the mask and the hood, 
you get this little like cowl down piece here you put it around his neck and then this is actually that mask i was talking about where it will sit above his mouth to kind of uh, cloak him a little bit more so you can you can make it look like all of the hood is still on him but just configured in a different way which is kind of neat that's kind of cool and then we get a sword so this is just a standard sword black hilt with a metallic blade but it's a sword and then it does have a uh, effect piece so you've got this sort of lightning bolt here that you can crisscross it through you know we've seen this a bunch before you could also use this with Raph as well this comes on Raph's side but I'm almost positive this is meant for uh, for Tommy just because of the size of it and then Raph comes with two sets of extra hands so he's got the gripping hands on him in the box and those hands can be used to hold the Psy in the between the fingers or just normal gripping st style you get a set of fists and you get a set of style pose hands so of course two of each we get a uh, fist effect kind of like a punch effect here in this sort of deep blue of course both of them can use this uh, so you've got this to share and then we've also got uh, this sort of like swooshing effect this comes on Tommy's side but I don't really think it's meant for him because it doesn't seem big enough to me but you can also you can use it it fits just fine but we do get probably the coolest accessories in the box we get Raph's Psy. So these are, of course, a combination of Raph's Psy and the Power Sword from Power Rangers. So it's got the very, uh, you know, Red Ranger sword motif, all of that inlay detail. They're humongous, too, first of all, with the red hilt and then the black and gold handle also. And then they do fit uh, in the the sheaths on his belt. And they are, they're huge, just like, like the vintage toys were. They're really big. And then, of course, you know, you can pop this on here. And this is why I think they look better with RAF because they just seem to fit a little better, more appropriately sized. So a lot of good stuff here. I mean, I like everything that's in this box except for maybe RAF's head sculpt. It's just not doing it for me. You know, I don't think it's necessarily a bad sculpt. If it was a little bit larger, maybe 10% for ten percent larger, I think I might be a little more excited about it. But it just seems to fall a little bit short for me. Otherwise, expression's okay, paint's all right, but I wish it was just a little bit bigger. So overall, good figures, not great figures. There's really not a lot that's remarkable about these. The big selling point, it's, it's the wow factor. Turtles as Power Rangers. That's really cool, that's fun. It's an amalgamation of stuff that I've loved for far too long at this point, and they're okay. Tommy as a foot soldier isn't anything exciting. I could very much take him or leave him. Raph is the star of the show with this pack, and I'm sure everybody would agree with me on that. He's a pretty decent figure. I really like him with that helmeted head sculpt on. He comes with a great array of accessories, you know, outside of the fact that I'm not a big fan of that unmasked head sculpt, but he comes with a lot of cool stuff. I just really wish I could have bought him separately or buy him with another turtle and, then, and another turtle two-pack and then a shredder and be done. So I'm kind of in a situation where I really want these turtles, but I don't want to have to buy a bunch of extra stuff just to get them. So that's going to do it for this look at the Power Rangers Lightning Collection, Raphael and Tommy. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.